Hello Biotechnicians, this is Dr. Farhan Zameer from Biotechnica Bangalore. For today, we will have an intensive discussion on the use of DNA sequencing in disease diagnosis and treatment. So, to understand this, let's dive in. Welcome back. For today, we will try to have a, a great in-depth discussion into use of DNA sequencing in disease diagnosis and treatment. So, to move on, let us try to focus on certain basic components of a DNA. So, when I look into the DNA component, so DNA are made up of three major components. The first component is the pentose sugar, the second component is the nitrogen basis and the third component is the phosphate group. So, the pentose sugar over here uh, in nucleic acids could be either deoxyribose or ribose, but in this case, in case of DNA, it is deoxyribose. However, uh, the nitrogen bases are, uh, you know, A, T, G, C, that is adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And then the uh, phosphate group is in the form of orthophosphoric acid, that is H3PO4, and all these three actually make up the composition of your DNA. So once we have understood the composition of DNA, let us also try to see what are the various types of DNA sequencing. Trust me, my dear friends, there are three major types of DNA sequencing. The first one is the Sanger's, you know, classical method of DNA sequencing. And this involves the manual method and then you have an automated method. Then apart from that, you have the chemical cleavage method and then, you know, the, the advanced method is your next generation sequence method, which is called as NGS. Let us try to understand everything in detail. So, what happens in Sanger's sequencing method? So, as a flowchart indicates, so now you have the first step, which is denaturation of the double-stranded DNA using heat. So, once I have, you know, the, the melting temperature, so which has been set, so this double-stranded structure is now been broken down into two single-stranded structures. So, this will make the multiple copies of a segment and then you attach a primer onto it and once you attach the primer and then add the, the, the four solutions of polymerase solutions and then you have an extension step. So once you have an extension step, you have the growth of the complementary chain until it undergoes termination die. So until it reaches the termination die, then there is again you will proceed with the denaturation of the grown chain and then finally followed by the electrophoresis of the four solutions. So once you do the electrophoresis of the four solutions, depending on the dye component, uh, you are able to identify whether this um, the, the moiety is an adenine or it is A or G or C or T or U. Okay, so that was with regard to the Sanger's method. Now, let us try to also have a, you know, illustration on uh, the next generation sequencing method so that once you understand the difference, you will appreciate the, the methodology. Now, once I have isolated the huge cluster of DNA, this has to undergo fragmentation. The first step over here is to fragment. So once we have the fragments which have been separated, then I will add adapters. So the moment I add adapters, so these adapters will just go and bind to the end of the fragments. And once it goes and binds to the end of the fragment, this adapter is then utilized to attach onto the flow cell. And once it attached to the flow cell, then it binds to the primer. And once it binds to the primer, there is PCR. And as you know, as the PCR proceeds, there is an amplification which happens and amplicons have been produced. And once you have the amplicons which have been produced, again, you dissociate the two fronts and then, you know, the dissociated uh, fragments are again, again clustered and depending on the cluster formation, you are then able to sequence them based on, you know, you with this data, you know that whether it is a, a or G or T or U and that is how a signal has been picked up and then finally the computer is able to tell you that what, uh, what is the entire stretch of, you know, the nucleotides which are present in a given segment. So now we have understood the Sanger's method. We have also understood the next generation sequencing method. So now you should be able to have a beautiful contrast. Uh, you know, you should be able to differentiate between Sanger's method and NGS method. Now in Sanger's method, you know, as I was trying to tell you, it is a termination method. So here you'll be having three major steps that is extend, arrange and detect. 
Okay, so these are the three major steps which have been used as a principal component of a Sanger's method. But however, in NGS method, you have four steps. That is, arrange, then you have extend, then you have detect, and then you have restore. So, you know, with all these, you know, combinations, uh, ultimately we are telling, we are trying to look into the, the entire sequence of uh, nucleotide. But however, the methodology what we are looking in, the specificity what we are looking in, and especially the depth per read what we are looking in is entirely different as compared to Sanger's method and that of the uh, you know uh, uh, NSG method. Now what are the applications of DNA sequencing? So to know the uh, you know uh, the, the advantages and how exactly I can use DNA sequencing for therapy I need to first understand various kinds of applications of DNA sequencing. Now the first advantage of DNA sequencing is you have D, you know, drug target identification and drug efficacy could be identified with this. Then personalized therapy could be developed. Then very importantly, biomarker discovery happens with this. Then biopharmaceuticals a very important, uh, you know, uh, a field of uh, pharmaceutics, which can have both uh, the understanding of biology and pharmacology plays a very, very crucial role. Very, very important is your vaccinology. Uh, so, uh, and then pharmacogenomics. I would try to stress more about pharmacogenomics because pharmacogenomics is the trend for the next five years. So if we are able to encash as biologists or pharmacologists, if we are able to co have a combination of bioinformatics with pharmacology or bioinformatics with that of biology, okay, you know, the, the, the next five years, it's your time. Now, very importantly, you have something which is called as polypharmacology and then pharmacoepidemiology is an other important stream where a lot of people are required and then this is how we can actually use the concept of uh, NGS, use the data which has been generated of NGS so that we can have, uh, you know, personalized drug therapies. Now, coming on to the very, very important component and this important component is pharmacogenomics. So for another few minutes, we would like to dwell upon what exactly is pharmacogenomics. Now, please remember every drug, every chemical drug, every synthetic drug has a particular side effects. It has its own advantages and disadvantages. So here in this particular video, let me try to make a proper clear cut differentiation of what exactly is pharmacogenomics. Now, please remember when, uh, you know, uh, when a disease uh, is been, uh, you know, uh, uh, a, a disease when it invades a particular patient, okay, or a particular subject, and the subject shows various kinds of symptoms. Now, these group of symptoms, if it is not been treated well, then the symptoms will get converted into disorders. Now, these disorders, if they are not been treated well, it will get converted into disease. And this disease, if it is not been converted, you know, it is not been treated, then it will com it have a combo of diseases, which we call it as multiple diseases. So these multiple diseases ultimately will lead into death. So this is the entire pipeline of, you know, pathogenesis. But however, now, you know, uh, you know, detection of certain diseases itself becomes very, very difficult. So how do I design a methodology wherein right from the, from the birth okay, of an individual, how do I track the entire disease curve? So for understanding this, here comes a newer technology which has a combination of biology, which has a combination of genomics, which has a combination of pharmacology, and very importantly, uh, using the tools of bioinformatics, this is able to explore into in detail intricacies of human genome. So how do I use this technology and then amalgamate that with DNA sequencing so that I can have a drug therapy? This is the answer which is called as pharmacogenomics. Now, if, with the pharmacogenomics, when a baby is being born, okay, you are able to take up a sequence, okay, you, can, you are able to take up a cell and then sequence it. So now this sequence will be given in a form of a chip to the guardian or to the parent. Okay, so, you know, throughout the, uh, you know, life, this will remain as an identity. Now, what happens is when that the same individual gets sick after five years or after 10 years. So now you have the old sequence, which has already been, you know, sequenced. And now at the point of pathogenesis and the point wherein the individual is suffering with the disease, again, we take up a cell and again, we try to sequence it. So now you have two sequences. One is the previous sequence and the other one is a fresh sequence. So we call, we'll call the previous sequence as a healthy sequence and the current sequence, okay, during pathogenesis, whatever we have sequenced, we call it as a sick sequence. 
So this is a well sequence and this is an unwell sequence. So now what we do is using the power tools of bioinformatics, very importantly, the sequence alignment tools such as BLAST. So, uh, so we try to align. So what is BLAST? Basic alignment search tool. So using BLAST, that is basic alignment uh, search tool. Okay, so basic local alignment search tool is the, is the BLAST tool. Okay, again, we have various kinds of BLAST like Mega BLAST, we have P BLAST, we have N BLAST. So in this case, we will be using N BLAST. And when we do an N BLAST, we now know that, you know, when, we, when it goes to and fro, now I know that it is precisely at a particular point, precisely at a particular site, okay, there is some dysregulation. So now what I can do is I can design a drug okay, which can go and rectify exactly at that particular site so that I do not have any kind of a side effects. So this is how once I have the sequencing power, okay, so uh, I can have, you know, diagnostics for any kind of disease or a disorder. Trust me, my dear friends, and in conclusion, I just want to tell you that, you know, uh, down the lane in another five years or 10 years, all, you know, diagnostic laboratories will get, just get shut down. This is mainly because uh, all the methods are invasive. Okay, so many a times I take uh, blood or, you know, I take, uh, uh, you know, CSF, all these processes are been actually uh, creates trauma on the patient. So now clinical diagnostics has to be done. A lot of emphasis has been given to clinical uh, diagnosis, which is actually painless. Okay, there should not be any kind of invasive methods which could be employed. So the entire diagnostics has been shifted towards non-invasive methods. Example, can you take my saliva and tell me what are the various kinds of diseases I'm suffering with? Can you take my tears, okay, and then tell me what are the various kinds of diseases what we are suffering with? So can you take me, take my one breath, okay? So are you able to analyze, you know, breath and then tell me what are the various kinds of diseases or disorders a person is suffering with? So now, using these kind of advanced technology, people are looking at in high amount of detailing of a particular disease and also remember with the cheaper cost, okay? And with the cheaper cost, it comes with lesser pain or almost no pain. So here, the most of the clinicians which are now called as clinical researchers will now get an option uh, as again with an amalgamation of AI, okay, they will get a prediction saying that whether a particular individual or a subject or a patient is suffering with a particular disease or not. And hence, this is the power of genomics. So please remember understanding, deciphering the code of life uh, in a much better way in in detail pattern is the necessity of an hour. And for this, we need to understand bioinformatics. So bioinformatics will actually play as an important key role in understanding the entire genome. Either the data is coming from the Sanger sequence or it is coming from a chemical cleavage method or if it is coming from an NGS method, okay, or an Illumina method, all these will not make a factor. What we know is we now we have a sequence and with this sequence, how do I actually use it for the benefit of humankind especially in disease detection and therapy. Now, if I'm able to do it in a much effective way, you know, this is uh, the entire, uh, you know, the entire purpose uh, of genome sequencing in clinical research has been satisfied. So I urge everybody, all our subscribers and people who are watching this video for the first time, okay, I urge you people to learn bioinformatics because bioinformatics gives you additional power to actually analyze the sequence, analyze the genome, analyze the proteome, analyze the metabolome at a, a different level than a normal biologist. So, you know, to validate this result, you can always validate it using wet lab data. But however, this will give you a prediction. 80% of the job is made easy. And, you know, the cost on the patient, the cost on the country could be actually been reduced. The economic or, you know, the, uh, the financial cost, the financial burden in terms of patient ratio can be actually lowered using all these kinds of technology. So through Biotechnica, we urge that every biologist, every computer scientist, every person who is like super interested in understanding biology in terms of computers, we urge you people to enroll for various kinds of workshops, various kinds of internships and various kinds of certification program. With this, you can actually empower your knowledge of bioinformatics so that we can create a uh, budding scientists who can innovate, who can create newer technologies so that we can have easy therapy, easy detection, easy diagnosis. And that is how we can minimize suffering in the society. Thank you very much for staying connected. All the very best.